two direction you have to work with the b2b and you have to work with the b2c mm-hmm. uh, you couldn't even focus on one thing mm-hmm. that's a problem because uh, but the expertise and the experience mm-hmm. what you can get in the that period and in this journey it's most important in your life you know the one of the fundamental aspects of any business is the financial aspects mm-hmm. if you understand the how it works you can just uh, control the whole the processes in your business yes. and that 95 percent of the any startups they don't know how to do manage their business with the financial aspects because uh, sometimes they can be good ceo with the sales experience that's interesting you know yeah. that i just uh, ready to tell about it this is a casual thing. Here's me again, and here is a guy from Uzbekistan. And his company is in Soko Accelerator, batch number two. And I met this guy during this time. Today, we'll explore more about Uzbekistan country and also about his business. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your invitation to your podcast. So, well, my name is Iskander Kurbanov. I'm a founder and the CEO of Avla Shop. I'm 25 years old. 25? I thought you were 30 more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 25 years old. Okay. I'm born in Uzbekistan, in Tashkent. Uh, that I started my journey uh, two years ago in a startup. Startup journey startup. Exactly. Okay, so tell me about your business. What does Ablo do? Ablo, it is a issue builder platform like a Shopify. It is a SaaS based product that we help the to properly onboarding of merchants to e-commerce market with the creating the, the e-shop and the help to onboarding to e-commerce market and make sure that we'll start the sell, selling their products on the website and uh, I mean the making more diversify their online channels by selling not only their website but go to the other marketplaces mm-hmm. and uh, aiming to be all in one solution for e-commerce management. So all-in-one solution you mean? is it more like it is all-in-one e-commerce management. So the, it it is good for the person, the merchant, the selling that's selling something, and they want some digital transform. Oh, uh, maybe they don't want, but they have a lot of problems mm-hmm. because uh, if you know that more than the seventy-five percent of the nowadays in the world. Uh, still working in traditional sales channels. That's which a means, huge problem. Which means traditional sales. That means uh, it is a, a little bit in a slow penetration of the e-commerce in the frontier markets, especially. That merchant sells, sells their products on the offline way, more offline. Exactly. Or just the Instagram, maybe uh, WhatsApp, and they're just chatting. And they're it is just a coming after the COVID, you know. Why? This product or product, uh, what we are doing, it is an actual and it's a needed product on time. That's a reason that due to COVID, a lot of I mean, entrepreneurs, I mean, the SMEs, they face it with the problems that uh, due to COVID, they have to go to the online. They started to selling them, promote their goods via social media using the Facebook, Telegram, WhatsApp, and Instagram. But they face it with another problem that uh, social media never can, I mean, they cover the, all the requirements of the merchants. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, uh, when we do the, the customer development, we go to the deeply analyze the, what is the main problem that we recognize that more than the 80% of the old order outflows, it's coming to not bring the customer to the end point of point. Mm-hmm. Because it comes, um, I mean, uh, usually from 8 p.m. Uh, up to 90 p.m. 
uh, in this time usually what are, uh, what people do they i mean they go to home yeah. and they have an dealing with their family that and uh, that comes as a problem with the low response to your customer mm-hmm. and the low response is no sales yeah. and uh, we have to go to the income that we have to digitalize all the business first of all and given a solution give um, the given opportunity to quickly go to the e-commerce market and uh, bring the their customer uh, directly to the website and sell their product uh, more quickly in a, in an automatically manner mm-hmm. so how did you find your idea why did you start this this thing <clears throat> okay uh you know that i haven't experienced more than the seven years in the financial industry mm-hmm. because when i was 70 years old i just my began career path in the financial industry i go to the internship in a consulting company mm-hmm. and uh, in the next i mean the seven years i worked at like investment analyst financial analyst but in this during the my period i opened uh, several projects in the horeca segment in the retail mm-hmm. and always the face of the problem then uh that i couldn't optimize the whole the things because when you just go and the business you learn about i mean when you open your business you open uh you learning a lot of things what you couldn't i mean later on in university yeah mm-hmm. and uh, when i just face it with a lot of problems i couldn't imagine that uh how i can i mean solve these problems and one of the things is only it only from your product and application you can just solve some one of the problems and uh, it was something like the interesting for me yeah. uh, for my who even don't understand the how it work because i don't understand what is the, i mean the back end what is the front mm-hmm. end i never the met the people and i just uh, told that the people who's the coding are the crazy people mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I, i have an idea it is a because Aula, it is a second project because uh, before that i started my, with my other i mean the startup journey oh. uh, yeah it calls the hopme.shop mm-hmm. it is a b2b marketplace because we tried to optimize the or i mean the purchasing system in organizations uh-huh. uh, through the blockchain technology using the smart contracts okay uh, but we faced it with a lot of problems exactly in a six month that uh to attract the merchants it was easy but to attract the end customers b2b to our user our platform it was a very high cost for us mm-hmm. and the unit economics was not profitly that we understand that in developing countries it is a lot of problems like a chicken egg mm-hmm. you go to the market if you have enough resources you can solve and try to put a lot of money yeah. to solve the chicken egg problem mm-hmm. but we decided to pivot our project to mainly focus to solving one of the problems of the merchants because they're more willing and the customer acquisition cost is very i mean the uh, cheap for us not so and high compared to the compared to the yeah exactly and with uh, i mean the, we saw that if you just uh, consider to uh, i mean the and the put all the focus to solving with one problem the making the possible to a merchant i mean onboarding to e-commerce mm-hmm. uh, they can uh, in the future teach our customers and that will have the i mean that solving the chicken and problem in the market with uh, limited resources yeah, in a quick manner and you pivoted when uh in 2021 uh we started to uh develop uh, our product of the shop uh, into 2021 it mm-hmm. takes a uh, nine months nine like uh, we burn months. yeah it's something like they burned the new child <laughs> it was so difficult because we faced it with a lot of problems with the cyber security that our developers they're trying to do their best and not only mvp and that they the good product that will be able to go with the market and to i mean build the core system uh which can be more i mean the scalable product that will be easy to scale with other countries that we're building uh-huh. there is a two products right there was and here and before and the before previous product is still there but you shut down for now exactly and so the same developers ongoing there development yes and how did you solve the transition there might be some burnout uh burnout it is a uh, i mean a simple things but uh, you have you have to uh to know your core value what you want to do when you can explain for your developers for your team that guys we have to stop now and pivot our product to another direction we can we have to do work on this 
uh, if they're given your core value, why you are doing something like this? If they, I mean, the, uh, if they will inspired by you and uh, by your idea, it's uh, not a problem to not to burn out. And you just uh, go continue because, uh, because we, yeah, because every day we make the mistakes mm -hmm. in something like the with the project as well as. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And let's go back to about yourselves. What is your background? Oh, uh, exactly. You know that my first job I got uh, as a photographer and DJ. Oh, exactly. Yeah, because Lo local. It is a local. Uh -huh. Yeah, when I was uh, 40 years old. Uh -huh. Uh, I usually on summer vacations go to the camp uh, to meet with my, I mean, the friends and the uh, to holiday that will be very great. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I just uh, 40 years, I want to go and I ask the dad, the dad, can you just buy a ticket to camp? He told me that no, it's a time to work. Mm -hmm. Forget about your camp. You have to go to work because uh, work will teach you be independent from me. That's a reason that's also uh, I started to tell that what can you do uh, if I couldn't go say, I mean uh, uh, to camp as I mean the uh, usually child to holiday but I can't do work because I have enough my photo camera Canon and uh, I'm just like, as the camp listen I'm there seven years and uh, I want to go, I mean, uh, having a job there as a photographer because I have a Canon, I have a printer, I can work on this. And that's it, I had got to my first job. Yeah. And the next two few years, I work as a DJ, photographer, uh, something like this, I helped uh, as a product manager mm -hmm. to other guys. And uh, as well as I meet my friends and I have uh, held this with them as well. As. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's interesting. So, and so. Uh, to transition to the entrepreneurship so why, why did you leave your job and start your own business uh you know it was uh, three years ago because when i just uh, i mean the start of feeling because before that i always worked with my i mean the to my shareholders mm -hmm. and uh, i was something like this great cardinal i always make to reach my shareholders okay and but the feeling that I'm not doing the something important, which will be not only commercially attractive, mm -hmm. but it should be also the social impactable. When I just realized that, that uh, one of the things what I have to do or I mean the are willing to do, it is to make the profitable business and as well as uh, give some social impact to society. How do you make money your business? It's a subscription. Merchants pay per month as their subscription fee, mm -hmm. uh, but we changed our business model since we so come what? up to Google acceleration program mm -hmm. because our mentor is a change our mindset. Okay, <laughs> could you explain? More? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, when we start our startup, we thought we have to give a premium uh, model, mm -hmm. use a premium model that everybody they can start for free and the upgrade with their business is growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we attracted the 500 merchants in three months and that, that's great, but uh, only 5% of them starting to pay. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough because what the, I mean, the investor want, they want to see your traction in the money. And what is the MRR? It's a very cool 1,000 US dollars at maximum that's a reason that it's not i mean the numbers they okay. want more see and it just to come to the google acceleration program we talk it a lot of and the things so okay what is the value what we give for our customers it is a growing their sales up to 20 percent in the first two months mm -hmm. okay and how much it will be and we just calculated an unit economics and told, okay, we can just uh, raise up the subscription fee mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, the close the freemium no model. More freemium, yeah. No more freemium. No more freemium. Only free trial days in three days. If the merchants decided to continue with us, mm -hmm. or, I mean, the uh, success managers start to onboarding their to e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, they teach them how to attract, how to do design, how to do start selling how to do link with the social media and how to generate them I mean, traffic and to it their could be done in three days. Three yes, days. three days of when the client, customer, merchant come to our platform and just to use and test it. Mm -hmm. 
how it's going to take it not and something like this mm -hmm. but after that they should they have to decide they stay with us um, or they go alone mm -hmm. without us i think the other other uh, subscription sas based models like maybe minimum seven days free trials and also we know ios apple based applications all premium and <laughs> in-app purchase like it works like this it is it's just a, like that. no it is just a testing gig purchases because now we get testing gig purchases mm -hmm. because uh, when i just come to the acceleration program our burnout only enough for one month yeah we not i mean the, didn't get i mean the attracting investment of today we're only strapping and we have our limited resources yeah. and I just thought what i can do mm -hmm. and uh, our traction i mean the mentor told me just to go growing and uh, scale your i mean the mm -hmm. money previous business model the customer must pay customer how much did they did pay uh, in the uh, previous model from 500 merchants they only paid 25 25 40 i mean the, 25 to 40 dollars per month ah uh, no i mean you how much you mean yeah, ah, okay, maximum, they pay the uh, maximum, maximum ninety dollars per month, and it's it's based on the per sales or unlimited sales. It's un uh, before that it was unlimited sales, mm -hmm. but they given uh, some integration plugins to it's a something like integration with delivery services, integration mm -hmm. with the payment system. Did you calculate how we calculated? Uh, we just see the traction of our merchant mm -hmm. before they started to selling online. And we just calculated how much they started to earn after the three to uh, two months after the, we launched with they them. Grew. Yeah, they grow up and to twenty percent. Yeah, and the uh, average revenue is a growth thing for one thousand, two thousand US dollars. Mm -hmm. Average margin that uh, merchants use mm -hmm. it is a twenty percent. Mm -hmm. And we decided to calculate how much net profit they they have. And from the net profit, we, I mean, they decided to uh, receive the 10% at minimum uh -huh. and uh, link it all the subscription model to quantity, I mean, the uh, quantity and the number of orders. Mm -hmm. And uh, if our matches is growing, we started to earn more money from that. That is more likely to 20 US dollars per month. It is so. our, we have uh, two models now, uh, new top model, two tariffs. First, it's at 20 US dollars. Second, 50. 50. Yeah. Basic advanced. Yeah, basic and advanced. Mm -hmm. Basic, if you have an uh, traction and uh, sales to up to 2000 US dollars, you pay for us uh, 20 US dollars. How's it going, new model? We uh, lose some clients, customers. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it all depends on your sales pipeline because we founded our, I mean, the value proposition. Mm -hmm. And the value proposition, it costs much higher than we, I mean, they give for our customers. Mm -hmm. Because when it just talk with somebody knows, I mean, understand the, our situation and something like that, they're stealing with us, but somebody tell, no, I, I, go, I can go to Shopify, something like this. Mm -hmm. And go, it's your problem. If you want to, it's your, if your decision. If you just uh, decide to go to other platform, you can do it. The next thing is, how did you solve, solve the chicken egg problem? Exactly. Acquiring customers. Uh, early adopters. You know that we have an, uh, I mean, the three things what we do. First, our target audience, I mean, the merchants, it's the Insta shops. Mm -hmm. uh, Insta shops have their own, I mean, the followers. It is uh, usually more than the 10,000. When we can properly onboarding and teach them how to, to sell for their customers the product, they started promoting us as well as. Because uh, all the clients come on, uh, come to the website via our, I mean, the identification center, mm -hmm. and we starting to collecting the data and the starting learning the, the customer behavior, mm -hmm. who the the clients, what they want to buy, what is the average check, and we just the learning now. Then proposing our product directly to the shops, right? Exactly. Uh -huh. We teach the merchant, merchant teach their customer, and uh, it works we see the result because uh, if we have on a uh, two direction you have to work with the b2b and you have to work with the b2c mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't i mean focus on one thing mm -hmm. that's a problem because uh, 
working with the B2C, maybe it's much easier, but uh, but when you just uh, teach them and the text, unit economics match, uh, can be much higher than the B2B. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, the B2C can be much cheaper than the B2B, and something like this. Yeah. And uh, when I just decided to do it, it started working really quickly, and we started to attract the new customers for our, I mean, the merchants. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a quickly manner that uh, that gives an opportunity now the, to solve the chicken problem in the nearest future yeah, sure. because it will take the time mm -hmm. to analyze I mean the six months or one year yeah. to have an okay what before it was what is the situation now mm -hmm. because in Uzbekistan e-commerce penetration only 7% so not 93% are no more using <laughs> any e-commerce yeah they don't have websites. not have webs no they don't have any access or buy something via mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. just imagine that means there is no inventory management they doing on excel sheet or something no they have an inventory management system uh -huh. but the people don't buy the online mm -hmm. they don't have an, any habit uh -huh. they used to go to the direct to offline shops to mm -hmm. buy the things but with COVID shops, listen, you can do another thing. You can just order your product via social media now. Mm -hmm. But in social media, you have a lot of several problems. We can the, just something like the traffic, uh, clicks and the leads and only from leads, only 10%, 15% can buy. Mm -hmm. And just imagine you are in the e-shop. I mean, the, which is the started to sell the products via social media, mm -hmm. and you talking with each of the, your customer every time, every day, mm -hmm. and uh, you can in time to forget who can order the product, mm -hmm. and uh, you use the I mean the Excel sheet to write it. Yeah, that's a problem. So far, uh, let's talk about your team. How many guys do you have now? Twelve. So are you guys still bootstrapping? Yeah. And do you guys doing some other side hustling jobs except the main thing? No, no. We fully focused on our product. How did you manage the, your cash flow? Uh, I have previous job that I earned the needed amount. I always uh, go to the with the old cards on my table that I put all the money, uh -huh. all the investment what I just attracted from other guys because I just uh, borrow with the money from my family uh -huh. and something like this. The, all my co-founders work are similar, that we borrow the money uh, from our friends, from family, and just put it uh, to the project. Mm -hmm. So so far, how much did you burn? Uh, we burned out in uh, two years, when it just started with the startup first and the second, uh, all around uh, 150K. Just for two co-founders, right? No, it is a four, 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 uh, four, four co-founders. Co yeah, I'm founder and I have the three co-founders. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so about the pie slicing, is it equal or? Uh, now it's not. Uh -huh. Before it was a similar, 25% for uh -huh. each member. Uh, but I have now 35% mm -hmm. because I put more money, more, I mean, the me and mm -hmm. just a focus to this. Uh -huh. Other two co-founders, they have an own business. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just uh, given an opportunity to be only on a supervisor board, mm -hmm. uh, not I mean the uh, operating in the operational management. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, my friend, with whom we are working, mm -hmm. he's a CEO. Mm -hmm. I'm a CEO. Mm -hmm. he, he's also CEO. No, CEO, uh, CEO uh, chief uh, of operation. Oper operating officer. Operating right. officer. Yes, yeah, so that's interesting. So, and after that, so. You guys have to discuss about the price. That's okay, guys. We need to discuss about this so because I'm spending too much things. I get a big slice of it. Just, just oh, telling that. Not just a telling. Uh, our all investment. It may be human time. It may be our really investment in the cash. It's all regarded to the money. Yeah. And our cap table only in the building via cap. I mean the via cash, mm -hmm. in the resources in the, I mean in the money. And then just to see, okay, I put that this money, just, I spend that this money, and the, it calculates something like this. Hold the pool, it uh, costs something like this, and uh, I have uh, 35 percent from that. Sure, sure. For now, what, what is your MRR and customer count? Uh, now it is uh, we approach it at uh, 2,000 MRR mm -hmm. after the three months of the launch. Mm -hmm. But before that, it's two weeks ago. We have only 700. Okay. 
Yes, we raise it. Uh, <laughs> and after the, the goal of tax activity, so how, how much are you? 20k. 20k. Yeah. MRR and the customer number of number of customers. 400 paying customers. Paying. Customers. Paying customers. Uh, how did you build your team? What are, what what is the challenge? Is there any uh, IT guys shortage in your country? Exactly, my co-founder, uh, CTO, which is uh, like uh, he was an investor, but uh, his own business in Uzbekistan. Uh, he before did work it in Amazon. Uh, he worked in uh, Siemens, uh, ING Bank. Mm -hmm. He was a good guy, understand the whole the IT structure. He can work it, mm -hmm. and uh, he helps his own guys in IT because they have uh, good connections. Mm -hmm. He attracted to me two guys who started to work with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, they locate in Turkey. Uh, Tech lead uh, is uh, he's uh, located in Turkey. My front end is located in Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> my back end and mobile application developer they're located now in. But they're from Uzbekistan, right? They're, they're from uh, no. Uh, one of the guys is uh, from Turkey. Turkey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah I see. Other guys is back. About your company's culture, what what is the most precious thing in your company? It would be honest, and uh, be ambitious. If your ambitions, you can just. Uh, uh, hit your goals as soon as possible that I see the, the people and uh, one of the cultures it is uh, some friendly and the building uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. and the ecosystem which will help not only the businesses but we help the, all to mm -hmm. other guys so what difficulties have you experienced to running your business what is the challenge and how did you solve or solving uh, it is a I mean the not high expertise in uh, IT. Mm -hmm. It's something like the problem. But you have good, good IT guy. You work in Amazon or something. No, yeah. I just talk about it. For me, as a CEO, mm -hmm. I'm just always uh, trying to solve the problem very quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. But when my just uh, developers say, listen, it would take some three, four days. I'm going to, what going to help? Mm -hmm. You can just uh, decide and uh, develop it in one day. <laughs> <laughs> And it takes uh, some time. It's some uh, some nervous because uh, you can work very quickly, it's but about uh, to losing the customers, right? Yeah, because Nearly. you're only fo fully focused the customers. Yeah. Because if they, your customers say, "Listen, it just doesn't work," back. Yeah, yeah come on, bugs. It's I'm loving it because I have a lot of bugs nowadays in, <laughs> <laughs> in my product because it's always developing, and I just uh, meet the face with a lot of bugs. And the startup without box, it's not startup, it's a corporate business, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason that I face it every day. Every day with the challenges, every day challenges with working with the human resources, every day challenges with your working with your customers, every day working with uh, your investors, maybe that, that I mean the own investors. It's something like the my founders and something like this. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea about how to solve this? Uh, now we started to see, okay, we have a lot of bugs mm -hmm. and uh, we have any customers. When customers say that I have an this bug, I have to solve this very fast. Mm -hmm. And it's just a call when uh, I mean the, uh, I mean the connecting with the customers and know the, how much, the, I mean the, how it's needed and the must have mm -hmm. and the jobs be done the first of all. Mm -hmm. And we just go to, and they put it to the roadmap to backlogs and the guys they are doing in the week and about your backlog and customer development journey so you're starting this thing uh, in in june right it took like yep. three months and that, right? so 100 merchants start using it of course they get feedback and so some feedbacks are good some are bad and so about about this kind of problem how did you solve it how are you solving it uh solving with the understanding of what is the high priority mm -hmm. we use the click up that's a good product that i just prioritize okay what is a must have for flow yep as many customers want yep that that's the good that's a yes that is a high priority for us yeah. and uh, for example high priority was the mobile application mm -hmm. because uh, when i just started to attract the customer via facebook and uh, social media mm -hmm. Uh, for just two days, we attracted the 7,000 applicants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 7,000 leads mm -hmm. that they come to our um, the platform. Oh. And uh, I want to open the eShop. And it just so uh, I'm to my uh, I am and my co founder, we started to call each day 
100 calls or 200 calls per day and just started to talking. And then most of them, it's not our clients, it's just interesting. Most of them, they go, I don't have a laptop. Give oh. me a mobile application. Okay. That will lose uh, more than the 3,000 uh, leads up to the trash that big because we don't have a mobile application. Then you write down all, all of his feedbacks and opinions on the ClickUp, right? Every, yep. every customer. Every customer. And 700. Uh, yeah, seven thousand. Seven thousand. But we, I mean, the uh, I just started to use the CRM for it. Mm -hmm. Before it, I just built my own CRM in Excel sheet in a mm -hmm. Google sheet. Yeah, it works properly. But when just uh, uh, come up the new employee, it's too difficult to uh, write. I mean, the codes and the change or something like this. Mm -hmm. It was uh, too difficult. No tracking. Uh, no, tra but we are tracking now. Uh -huh. We ha we have an data, but we didn't analyze all of them uh -huh. because we didn't have any time. Because uh, I'm not only the CEO, I'm the accountant, I'm in the financial analysis, I'm in selling, I'm in the marketing, I'm just a fundraising. I just I do all of the same. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> so so for what CRM are you using right now? Now uh, I'm a CRM because it's based on the Russian language and everybody can understand it. And what what is tools uh, tools are you using? Guys? So what, what is the most important tools? Do you suggest uh, to the guys who are watching this? Exactly, uh, not application, maybe to understand the whole the business process. Mm -hmm. Because uh, before that, I didn't know about the backlogs. Mm -hmm. I heard about it on one webinar that got, we work on a backlog on I mean, a basis and just what is a backlog? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just, yeah, I'm every day learning, you know, mm -hmm. that it is so interesting because I'm not a very, um, I mean, the clever guy maybe who understand the whole, the, I mean, the exactly. things in a startup because I'm every day in the, I mean, the learning something new. And they go, we use the backlogs and just to start, okay, how do you can work? And they start to optimize it in my ClickUp application. Mm -hmm. And then just, it started to work mm -hmm. and the people start to understand it and understand that the core value, what gives a click up. And after that, we understood, okay, what's the next? Mm -hmm. That uh, in the beginning, you can just use Excel or Google Sheets. It's fine. It's fine. It's enough. You can, because uh, before, uh, for me to build my CRM in Amo CRM, it was uh, very easy because I know the whole, the process of my customer journey. Mm -hmm. I just uh, put it and I see how it works now. But I'm changing always, but uh, as well as before that I was prepared for it because I know to help build this process and I just uh, copy and pass in the CRM. Mm -hmm. And it works now more, I mean, the better. That's the reason you can just always start with the Google Sheets. Is there any feature like collecting feedbacks from the merchants in Amazon? Uh, not Di yet. Directly, so. I don't know, how, exactly. How do you collect the, the merchants feedback? Is there any other platform or automation tools or something like that? It's just a uh, direct via call. Call. Customer support team, right? It is me, I'm a co-founder. Okay. <laughs> still 200 calls per day. Yeah, but not still, but uh, because I'm in Kazakhstan, I couldn't, I mean, the, before I just call via my phone, mm -hmm. but uh, I just asked my, I mean, the colleagues and the partners to open the IP telephone, uh, IP telephone that we, I mean, I could, I have to call to my customers, but I couldn't now. And uh, I hope that next week I will start to start, I mean, the calling okay. directly to my customers. Sure, sure. How many big cities are in Uzbekistan? Uh, four, maybe. Four. Tashkent. Tashkent, Samarkand, Samarkand. Bukhara. And the Hiwa also, but we have in the Kokan. Uh -huh. uh, we have in the Ferjana region. It is including three cities. It's the most crowded area. Uh-huh. So every city has your your customers. Uh now yeah. we have a uh, wide uh customer from uh, Fergana region, Uzutashkan and Samarkand. So tell me about your country. No, startup ecosystem is only growing. Not a lot of I mean startups, but uh, in 2016 I opened the IT park. Mm -hmm. It's just a local house like Astana Hub. Mm -hmm. They started to teach people what is a startup. Because just ask me 10 years ago that, uh, you know, what is startup? I would tell them, what is this? It's, uh, Maybe something cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe something cool thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and they just started to know, and uh, 
every day I see the young guys in the universities which started to their journey. Mm -hmm. But you know that in this era, in these years, to being the startup, it's not only student life. I mean, st startup. I mean, the student journey. In a, because it's much, I mean, the bigger. Because now we see, I mean, the, can I mean, the given the money for students. Mm -hmm. Because we see the only the Facebook history. Yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> when they uh, study in the government, just ask the investor to give them the money. It's okay, but uh, now it's impossible. Because if you wanna be a startup, you go to, first of all to some corporate companies to know the their culture, mm -hmm. how it works, what is the main problem, mm -hmm. to find the core value or mm -hmm. core problem, what you can solve with your idea and then just to prepare to do it. It's a more, I mean, the uh, can be a successful story in other, you know, just a startup with your friends in the university and just a fail up. That journey <laughs> must have. Must be. Yeah, must have. You have to go to go some corporate mm -hmm. first of all, yeah, yeah. because uh, you teach to how to I mean the uh, communicate with other guys, how to communicate with your colleagues, mm -hmm. just to know to how to work, and it really business matter. Mm -hmm. Because before the graduation in university, you didn't know about it. But when you go just to go to some company to know the culture. You can be inspired, you can just see and teach and learning something new and just go to open your startup. So is there any, how many VCs or investment funds in the US? Uh, now we have uh, four VCs. Four, big. Not big, it is only four VCs. <laughs> <laughs> and so the generating money the most in the US. What, uh, sector, what field? More fintech. Fintech? Yeah. Uh, because uh, two VCs is a come from the bank and the fintech sector. It's like Aloha Ventures. It's is Aloha Bank uh, company affiliated, mm -hmm. and the Uskart. It is a fintech product, like a Visa, but Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other, I mean the UzVC. It is national investment fund, VC venture fund. Mm -hmm. They invested, uh, I mean the governmental money. Mm -hmm. And one of the private uh, venture capital, it's a similar, mm -hmm. but uh, as I know that more usually may invest to their own product. Mm -hmm. What is the main export of Uzbekistan? Main product? Update was the cotton. Cotton. Yeah. But uh, we have on other textile products. Mm -hmm. It is a manufacturing. It was very good. We have an, uh, uh, gold oil and gas something we usually in central asia <laughs> yeah sure sure population is it's about a 35 million now that's huge that it's a, it's a huge yeah. yeah but it's not a huge uh, like a pakistan or 80 million and it's uh, the only one double land local country in the world right? <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah well, what is the interesting facts about Uzbekistan? what do you like most what, what is the unique thing of it's a food food Exactly. Uzbekistan food and uh, how the people the preparing the that's uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Just uh, I'm missing that because I used to eat. <laughs> and here different? Kazakhstan is different? Kazakhstan is different, yeah. Oh, wow. I think the whole Central Asia is similar. Uh, they eat similar food and how do they produce? Oh, something like that. But in Uzbekistan, a lot of national cuisines. Like we have another plough, but it's plough, it's not similar, which is preparing the in Uzbekistan. Uh -huh. We have an, in each region their own recipes to how to prepare their own coming I mean, the plough. Can, can you tell us how, how many times of ploughs, different types of ploughs could be? Uh, in, in Uzbekistan, <laughs> in every region, they have an own different plough. So can you count it? It is a lot, uh, I mean, maybe 12, 13. 12, 13. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, uh, for example, in Bukhara, it's more they uh, did. Uh, they use uh, some corns in something like this. In uh, Fergana region, people use uh, other rice. In Tashkent, other rice. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put uh, like a, uh, y y we have a Chekhana plov. It's uh, something like when you just uh, come home to, to drink with your, I mean, the uh, friends or tea. Mm -hmm. And there's something like the place, Chekhana, it's called. Uh -huh. uh, it's like a tea room. It, I mean, the, if you translate it, uh, and it's just a calm. Chechen plov. It's a different from the Tashkent also. That 
you have in touch on several types of the plow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you have a uh, wedding plow. Uh -huh. Wedding plow, it's the most delicious the plow. Okay. You can just imagine when the wedding is uh, preparing, uh, usually from the wife's side, the parents organize the plow in the morning for 500 people. Mm -hmm for 500 people usually <laughs> and every day i mean the, every day you can just uh, go i mean the, if you wake up very early and go to somewhere you every day can see the restaurants that are open and there a lot of people come and you, they eat in the morning it's a six o'clock maybe seven o'clock okay <laughs> the plow is national food right exactly yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of i mean the delicious there yeah sure how's like average IT engineers engineer salary in this place? Oh, it's growing compared with Russia. It's a similar price, you know. Compared to Russia? Exactly. Because okay. now for me, it's a more cheaper to attract the Turkish uh, developers oh, really? rather than the higher in Uzbekistan. Can you tell it exactly the number, the range? Average, average middle average. developer yeah, yeah, so average uh, now earn from 1,000 up to 1 1.5 thousand. USD per month. Yeah, per month. It's similar to Kazakhstan, right? Yeah, it's similar to Kazakhstan. But, but it's higher than Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. Exactly. Uh -huh. uh, if you just regard the full stack or, I mean, the uh, good senior developer, mm -hmm. it's starting from 4,000 US dollars per month. Yeah, it, it can be counts to 10,000. But you have 30, 35 million people, so there is so much capacity, engineer capacity. Yeah, but good engineers go to work to other world companies. That's a huge, I mean, the right, need, right, the, right. yeah, that we need uh, a lot of, I mean, the developers. And we, when is a deficit in your country, price is uh, growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How to keep this talents in your country? Do you have any idea? Uh, I don't think so. The government tried to keep them because, uh, I think the similar, if I have any chance to go to the Google or some of the, I mean, the big companies, I will go. <laughs> <laughs> shut down your, this startup? No, no, I would not shut down. <laughs> I, if if uh, uh, Shopify want to buy us, uh -huh. I would say, okay, I will just tell me to sell you this product and I'll go with your company work. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most common dream of young people? like you from your country it's like uh working with the big companies like a dream no it's not like a dream mm -hmm. dream it's just like a, uh first of all it's to de develop your country yeah because a lot of patriots when you just go to other countries to work with the, in the big companies you learn a lot from them you can just come with this mind to the market and try to do you for yourself, your project and something like this. To develop your own product and make it unicorn. Right? Exactly. But uh, sometimes I see the guys who stayed there in the USA and they start their product in the USA. Mm -hmm. But when you can see that they started to promote their business and they're raising the money, mm -hmm. their product and use it in the USA, you just to be honest, uh, it's great. And they say, it is an Uzbek phone and say, wow, that's great. I want to be similar. Just, I want to be similar who can work, not only work in Uzbekistan, because Uzbekistan with the 35 million population, it's not, I mean, the huge market, first of all. Uh, it's you, not a huge market? Yeah, it's not a huge okay, market. We have 3 million people. <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason why, uh, why you come to Central Asian market as well as. Sure. Yeah, that's interesting. About your entrepreneurship, so how do you level up your skills and keep consistency in your uh, I'm hurting everyday good guys yeah. in my team i mean hiring i mean uh, attracting the people who knows more than me mm -hmm. i'm learning from them every day how do you attract them and how do you get them in your team uh i impact them i speak to them i inspire them mm -hmm. <laughs> i pursue them we have a big dream mm -hmm. and the big dream have to come as soon as possible. Do you offer the salary more than the average or the similar? Or My guys make them more than, than me. My salary is the one thousand US dollars. Okay. Okay. The, when my guys earn the one hundred, I mean the one thousand or five hundred, mm -hmm. average 
good. I mean, in marketing and IT, they, they earn more than me. Yeah, then sure, I sure. offer they, the, they, I mean, the good uh, they must, offers yeah. that they must. Yeah. And uh, that's the reason why I just attracting them. Yeah, and the working in startup, you know, it's just every day in the business facing the challenges. Mm -hmm. And the, we, when you just every day, I mean, the face uh, facing with the challenges, you in an optimally manner starting to improve your skills. Because you start to understand the whole building, whole the business process, you start to analyze it, and uh, things what uh, not corporate can give you. Because in corporate, you just uh, focus on one thing, but when you just work on a startup, you start to analyze a whole whole the thing what happened, mm -hmm. and you just improve. Now, yeah. What are your future plans? Future plans? It's a uh, scaling. Not only in Uzbekistan, we try to go to the Turkish market. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we have the fun, I mean the CTO team, and uh, it's just easy to access them. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, actually, we were aiming to go to the also to metaverse, and they're using the blockchain technologies and uh, try to uh, figure out the AI technologies ML mm -hmm. to analyze the custom behavior to focus on the customer customer experience on buying something. Mm -hmm. And just to, we will go to the seminar segment. Mm -hmm. But it sounds cool. But how do you integrate this, the cool things in your current business? Uh, you know that I will play uh, Sims. It is a game. So yeah, 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 Sims. It is. I think that it is the first time when you just create the some metaverse. Yeah. <laughs> Because you create the, your, I mean, the account. You just create develop, your, develop. I mean, the develop your, I mean, the person. I'm just not thinking about it because uh, when we just uh, go fly with our more merchants, more affiliated program, more partners, it will be more JMV. More JMV, it comes to more, I mean, the merchants as well. Mm -hmm. It's something like the cycle, yeah. Uh, where more merchants will understand, okay, it is a time we know the whole the customer base uh, going through our, I mean, the ID, Avlo ID system. Mm -hmm that uh, analyze every time, every day. The customer's behavior. Exactly. What they buy. What they what buy. They buy. Yeah. And uh, it's just a connecting with the metaverse will be something. Start to creating your, develop your, I mean, the personal. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you just create your avatar, not only your avatar, I mean the personage, mm -hmm. uh, you just start, I mean, that we will try to give them a more upsell and maybe more fit the product. Mm -hmm. And we go to work with the uh, uh, merchant also to, I mean, the digitalize the product in 3D model mm -hmm. and give it to the possible that if you go to some website, you just see, okay, I want to do, do, do something like, and just to wear it on your personage and you see and how it will be work mm -hmm. and how it will seems for you. Yeah. And we just uh, give an, uh, as a uh, eShop build platform that, listen, you can just uh, put this in the closet so for you, it will be more better. Mm -hmm. And just uh, given a uh, new opportunities, yeah. and they uh, make it possible in the metaverse also. When you just to uh, uh, create uh, cities metaverse, mm -hmm. when you just uh, go and uh, see the some shop, it is a shop directly connected with your eShop, and uh, it is possible just uh, uses this technology and make it uh, and improve the whole the customer experience in a buying something product. If no entrepreneurship, no startup, what is that? would you be doing? Uh, I will work in the finance. I love numbers. All the business is, uh, I mean, the regarding to the numbers, I just use all the time numbers. I think I will just work in a business. What is the most important advice did you get from someone? Uh, would be in English. Sorry, if, I mean, the, forget about it. Good advice. Good advice. It was never, 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 never. Let me to check. So speak language. Ah, uh -huh. never be afraid. Never fear about your dreams and the life this wants. You could all be hostile and the whole the, you, you have to do all the time your best. It doesn't matter in which sector, in which I'm in the journey. Mm -hmm. It can be your business. It can be other business in the corporate you work. But always when you just to try to develop yours as a, like a, improve your skills, improve your expertise, what you do, and you 
can be 1% from 100% of the people and being successful in any business, in any sector, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But it is possible. But you have to don't feel fear or be afraid about the something can go wrong and I check I can lose the money. No, money is nothing. Money is only resources. But the expertise and the experience mm -hmm. what you can get in the that period and in this journey it's most important in your life. Because uh, if it will be the same, if you go to, I mean, the, if your cap valuation will be one billion dollar and you'll be a unicorn, mm -hmm. I think you will feel nothing. But because you feel the before that in this process, in this journey. Sure. Who did you get that? My shareholder. I mean, sure. not, not share before. I mean, the ex shareholder, my oh, boss. Yeah. I always learned from the billionaires in his ex. What is, what is the name of the book that you read last? From Good to Great? Yeah. Peter Thiel. Yeah, that's a good. That being the fifth levels of the CEO, it's always to try to be not only good person that can just manage all the thing, but to be not on the fourth level. It's just like a fifth level. Mm -hmm. uh, how you can be, I mean, the fifth level of the CEO, mm -hmm. who can the can the vision or have the vision not only for five years, mm -hmm. but have the vision for 50 years. That being trying to do something like this person. Mm -hmm. What do you worry about? Uh, about maybe about the resources because uh, i never uh, think about the resources but uh, when every month uh, when uh, times come to pay uh, <laughs> i mean the wages and a payroll for your i mean employees you think that okay resources is limited mm -hmm. how i can just more more earn more money you are afraid of being bankrupt something exactly No, but I'm not worried. Like, I mean, so much, but it's a stimul like. Yeah, it's one of the, the risks, right? Yeah, it's one of the risks, and they lose the people because the business uh, uh, exactly it's nothing, but the people is uh, yeah. it's the uh, most important thing. It's the relationships. What is the one thing you cannot live without? Live without? I can live without a car, maybe or a phone. Car in the, or a phone? Yeah, it doesn't matter for me. Who are you? That? What's your backup list? I mean, lifelong goals. Lifetime goals to be freedom, first of all, financial freedom, make them more money, being the billionaire. What age? For 30 years, I hope. I the mean, age of 30? Yeah, age of 30. The, just five years later. It's a five okay. years later. I, I want to more go to the venture capital also, mm -hmm. because uh, I have a huge potential to teach other guys to make also the startup. I have, I can, I mean, the teach for finance, for example, that I really love. Sure, sure. Because, uh, you know, the one of the fundamental aspects of any business is the financial aspects. Mm -hmm. If you understand the, how it works, you can just uh, control the whole the processes in your business. Yeah, sure. And that 95% of the any startups, they don't know how to do manage their business with the financial aspects, because uh, sometimes they can be good CEO with the sales experience. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is a CTO or CEO who's only understand that they're building the product, but the infrastructure in the financial aspects, they couldn't understand it. And I think one of the more the failures it comes to business, it's uh, not understanding the financial aspect of your business in a curly manner that you have to, you can, I mean, the, you have to know how to manage your financial. That's a, that's a, that's my advice. Yeah. That's a things what I'm doing. Yeah, I think that's that. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to having you and thank you for coming. Thank you for your time and thank you to the guys who are watching this till the end. <laughs> it's us, so yeah. Come to Uzbekistan, guys. We are close countries. 30, 30 <laughs> different types of clothes, right? <laughs> Not only pubs, it's a beautiful place also, ancient cities that you have to see because we have a lot of things connected or I mean the mentality because we close countries because uh, if you know Mongolian uh, some period I mean they call the whole the Central Asia countries also. Yeah, Tim Timurhan. Yeah, go to Uzbekistan together later with me guys see you thank you very much yeah, yeah, yeah. have a nice day yeah thank you thanks me yeah